Tana is a Pali word, which originates from the Vedic Sanskrit word ti, which means thirst, desire, wish, from Proto Indo Iranian asterisk ti snas. It is an important concept in Buddhism, referring to thirst, desire, longing, greed, either physical or mental. It is typically translated as craving, and is of three types, kamatana craving for sensual pleasures, bhavatana craving for existence, and vibhavatana craving for non-existence. Tana appears in the Four Noble Truths, wherein tana is the cause of dukkha suffering, pain, unsatisfactoriness and the cycle of repeated birth, becoming and death samsara. Etymology and meaning The word tana is derived from the Vedic Sanskrit word ti, tirsna which is related to the root tars thirst, desire, wish, ultimately descending from Proto-Indo-European asterisk ters dry. This word has the following Indo-European cognates, Avestan Tarsa dry, Ancient Greek Taromoi to dry, Gothic Orsis dry, Old High German Durst dry, English Thirst. The word appears numerous times in the Samhita layer of the Rigveda, dated to the 2nd millennium BCE, such as in hymns 1.7.11, 1 1.16.5, 3.9.3, 6.15.5, 7.3.4 7.3.4 It also appears in other Vedas of Hinduism, wherein the meaning of the word is thirst, thirsting for, longing for, craving for, desiring, eager greediness, and suffering from thirst. Tana is an important Buddhist concept, and found in its early texts. It literally means, thirst, longing, greed, either physical or mental. <laughs> <laughs> Relation to dukkha In the second of the Four Noble Truths, the Buddha identified tana as a principal cause in the arising of dukkha suffering, pain, unsatisfactoriness. The tana, states Walpola Rahula, or thirst, desire, greed, craving, is what manifests as suffering and rebirths. However, adds Rahula, it is not the first cause nor the only cause of dukkha or samsara, because the origination of everything is relative and dependent on something else. The Pali canons of Buddhism assert other defilements and impurities kilisa, sasava dhamma, in addition to tana, as the cause of dukkha. Tana nevertheless, is always listed first, and considered the principal, all-pervading and the most palpable and immediate cause of dukkha, states Rahula. Tana, states Peter Harvey, is the key origin of dukkha in Buddhism. It reflects a mental state of craving. Greater the craving, more is the frustration because the world is always changing and innately unsatisfactory. Craving also brings about pain through conflict and quarrels between individuals, which are all a state of dukkha. It is such tana that leads to rebirth and endless samsara, stated Buddha as the second reality, and it is marked by three types of craving, sensory, being or non-existence. In Buddhist theosophy, there are right view and wrong view. The wrong views, it ultimately traces to tana, but it also asserts that ordinary right view, such as giving and donations to monks, is also a form of clinging. The end of tana occurs when the person has accepted the transcendent right view through the insight into impermanence and non-self, both appropriate and inappropriate tendencies, states Stephen Laumachus, are linked to the fires of tana, and these produce fruits of kama thereby rebirths. Quenching and blowing out these fires completely, is the path to final release from dukkha and samsara, in Buddhism. The Pali texts, states David Webster, repeatedly recommend that one must destroy tana completely, and this destruction is a necessary for nirvana. Tana is also identified as the eighth link in the twelve links of dependent origination. In the context of the twelve links, the emphasis is on the types of craving that nourish the karmic potency that will produce the next lifetime. Topic <laughs> types. The Buddha identified three types of tana: kama tana, sensual pleasures craving, craving for sense objects which provide pleasant feeling, or craving for sensory pleasures. Walpola Rahula states that tana includes not only desire for sense pleasures, wealth and power, but also desire for and attachment to ideas and ideals, views, opinions, theories, conceptions and beliefs. Dhamma tana. Bhavatana craving for being, craving to be something, to unite with an experience. 
This is ego-related, states Harvey, the seeking of certain identity and desire for certain type of rebirth eternally. Other scholars explain that this type of craving is driven by the wrong view of eternalism eternal life and about permanence. The bhavatana craving for non-existence, craving to not experience unpleasant things in the current or future life, such as unpleasant people or situations. This sort of craving may include attempts at suicide and self-annihilation, and this only results in further rebirth in a worse realm of existence. This type of craving, states Phra the Pinemongkal, is driven by the wrong view of annihilationism, that there is no rebirth. Cessation of Tana The Third Noble Truth teaches that the cessation of Tana is possible. The Dhammakakapavatana Sutta states, Bhikkhus, there is a noble truth about the cessation of suffering. It is the complete fading away and cessation of this craving tana, its abandonment and relinquishment, getting free from and being independent of it. Cessation of Tana can be obtained by following the Noble Eightfold Path. In Theravada Buddhism, the cessation results from the gaining of true insight into impermanence and non-self. The insight meditation practice of Buddhism, states Kevin Trainer, focuses on gaining right mindfulness, which entails understanding three marks of existence: dukkha, suffering, anicca, impermanence, and anatta, non-self. The understanding of the reality of non-self, adds Trainer, promotes non-attachment because if there is no soul, then there is no locus for clinging. Once one comprehends and accepts the non-self doctrine, there are no more desires, i.e. tana ceases. Tana versus Chanda Buddhism categorizes desires as either tana or chanda. Chanda literally means, impulse, excitement, will, desire for. Baum states that chanda is desiring what, and no more than, will be attained, while tāna is, desiring more than will be attained. However, in early Buddhist texts, adds Baum, the term chanda includes anxieties and is ambiguous, wherein five kinds of chanda are described, namely, to seek, to gain, to hoard, to spend and to enjoy. In these early texts, the sense of the word chanda is the same as tana. Some writers, such as Ajahn Susito, explain chanda as positive and non pathological, asserting it to be distinct from negative and pathological tana. Susito explains it with examples such as the desire to apply oneself to a positive action, such as meditation. In contrast, Rhys Davids and Stade state that chanda, in Buddhist texts, has both positive and negative connotations, as a vice, for example, the Pali text associate chanda with lust, delight in the body, stating it to be a source of misery. Chanda, states Peter Harvey, can be either wholesome or unwholesome. Topic. Relation to the three poisons Tana and avidya ignorance can be related to the three poisons. Avidya or moha ignorance, the root of the three poisons, is also the basis for tana. Raga attachment is equivalent to bhava tana craving to be and kama tana sense craving. Dosa divsha aversion is equivalent to vibhava tana craving not to be. According to Rupert Gethin, tana is related to aversion and ignorance. Craving leads to aversion, anger, cruelty and violence, states Gethin, which are unpleasant states and cause suffering to one who craves. Craving is based on misjudgment, states Gethin, that the world is permanent, unchanging, stable, and reliable. Lifer relates tana to avidya moho, because it is based on the mistaken presumption that the samsaric dance of opposites is ultimate reality. For example, in the first discourse of the Buddha, the Buddha identified tana as the principal cause of suffering. However, his third discourse, the Fire Sermon, and other suttas, the Buddha identifies the causes of suffering as the fires of raga, dosa, divsha, and moha. In the Fire Sermon, the Buddha states that nirvana is obtained by extinguishing these fires. <laughs> See also Avidya Buddhism, Buddhism and psychology. Chanda Buddhism Kleshas Buddhism Three Poisons Buddhism Twelve Nidanas Upadana equals equals notes <laughs>